Last time on MJ Sailing, we continued on with our Atlantic crossing and finally found some winds along with a few squalls. Georgie was entertained by a feathered friend visitor. And we celebrated Matt's birthday out on the open ocean. So today is the start of day 16 of our Atlantic crossing. We are around 850 miles from landing in our destination of Porta and Fial Azores, about 800 miles off the coast of mainland Portugal. It's just after midnight right now, so I have just started my night watch. Got a beautiful full moon out tonight to guide us and unfortunately we are starting to lose our wind a little bit you can probably hear the sails starting to smack um, went to bed with strong winds at 8 p.m. doing about six and a half knots and now they've lightened up so we're doing about four and a half knots and unfortunately they're gonna keep um, just getting lighter throughout the day today so that's a bit of a bummer but at least it will be kind of flat and comfortable again <laughs> which is the only benefit to going this slow um, so yeah, we're just going to take you through a day in the life of an ocean crossing. So it is the end of my 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. watch and I just got to watch the sunrise which is normally not a normal thing unless we're really close to the poles which will be next year um, but we just kind of got I don't want to say lazy on changing our time zones but I was really psyched to actually see a sunrise and by not changing the time zones as we go north and as we go east it's pretty much the only way that we could do it so then I think tomorrow we'll probably change so that um, sun will be rising at 5 a.m. when it's supposed to instead of 4 a.m. but I'm just glad that for one time I got to see it because Lord knows I will not be getting up this early any normal time that we're in harbor. This is the great four to eight shift. Uh, worst part about it is I can't drink any coffee because I do need to be able to fall asleep again at 8 a.m. So it's pretty much trying to stay awake, um, eating breakfast, reading a book. That's about what I do at this time. Just make sure the sails are trimmed properly uh, for Jess when she comes on at 8 a.m. Uh, that's pretty much what I do during this time. Right now I'm reading a book by Bill Bryson um, a history of the Royal Society in London. Exciting stuff. So that's that's the book of the day. Um, other than that, I'll just uh, sit around for a little bit and wait, bated breath, for I can wake Jess up and go back to sleep. It's, it gets exhausting just sitting around here doing nothing all day. <laughs> I am back up now for the day, so I have 12 hours, well, from the time I get up 12 hours until I go back to bed for the night, uh, two four-hour shifts apiece, although Matt normally sleeps in an extra hour to hour and a half on his second sleep shift. But it's a um, beautiful morning. Things have calmed down, so I can actually move around the boat better than we could yesterday. Not quite a 
healing over to the same degree, so that's nice. And I just had some cereal for breakfast, just kind of waking up, getting into the daily groove. And now it is time for my favorite part of the day, which is coffee and emails. Coffee cups and cigarettes laying around the room. I don't mind a little mess, just want to stay with you ooh, ooh, and we'll do anything that we want to do. Won't be scared of falling down no more. Oh, oh, oh. So take me away, some of the place. Don't want to wait. Oh, my Indian summer, take me away. I ain't afraid. Calling your name. Oh, my Indian summer. This here is our Iridium satellite communications and it allows us to get weather files, um, send and receive emails, and for this crossing, and because right after it we're going to be going another thousand miles north up to Ireland, we decided for us it was best to get the unlimited data plan. We're only going to have it for two months, which is kind of why we're springing for it before we um, kind of like cancel our plan until next summer. So pretty much every day I get up with my coffee and I put the antenna here up on top of the coach roof and wait for a signal and then I get onto our iPhone and use that as what we used to uh, send and receive messages. So then I check to see if anything has come in and then I will usually reply to our friends, my parents. Um, right now we have a set of friends, Bill and Grace, on SV Calico Skies. They left um, the same harbor the same day we did about three hours earlier. So they're doing the same journey. They just happen to be oh, about 600 miles ahead of us right now. They caught all of the good wind breaks that we missed. And also I usually talk to my friend Teresa uh, from Sailing Yacht Ruby Rose. She just finished this crossing a few weeks ago. Uh, her and her husband Nick just arrived to mainland Portugal, so she can kind of sympathize with what I'm going through every day out here, but it's just my nice little me time in the morning, just relax, um, kind of have a sense of normalcy because that's what we would normally do on the boat in a harbor. If we had internet signals, have coffee and check emails and just news and other things, so it's the one thing every day that I have that doesn't change. We are green under the sun, we do our best to hide. Innocence fading away, as we learn the truth, then we'll be anything that we wanna be. Don't again, what's coming in? So it turns out our luffing head sail because of the wind coming behind us and dying down was enough to get Matt out of bed a little bit early. So he just got up right now and we put the spinnaker pull out. So right now we're uh, riding a lot more smooth because the wind isn't blowing out of the sails when the swells come and kind of push us on our side a bit. And let's see. Our speed has jumped up from 2.8 knots to 3.3. .3. Making lots of progress here. And we also saw on our AIS that there is a 1,066 foot cargo ship that's gonna come within about a mile and a half of us in 30 minutes. So that's always kind of fun to see, a nice little distraction, especially when they get that close in the daytime. Don't want them that close at night. We usually make sure that we have at least a mile and a half between us and other ships. Um, if not, we'll give them a call. But this one will be, hi Georgie. <laughs> fun to see go by in the middle of the afternoon.
While we would love to have a little bit more belly in the head sail to catch a bit more air, unfortunately with the waves that we're experiencing, they keep dumping and then filling, dumping and filling the head sail. So what we do is we furl it in a little bit. That makes it a bit flatter and it holds its position a bit better. And then the other reason why we do it is, unfortunately, the spinner pole that we have is the J dimension, which is the distance from the mast to the forestay. And with that, it's, a, it's about two feet too short for our actual Yankee. And to, if we were to use the whole length of it and have it unfurled, there's actually too big of a belly and it just keeps spilling the air. So what we do is we furl it in a little bit tighten it um, so we get a bit flatter and it holds it a lot better in the conditions that we're in. So tonight for dinner we are having leftover chicken fried rice and I actually made it all using canned goods except for one green pepper that was on its way to becoming inedible. <laughs> But otherwise, it was rice, a can of chicken, green pepper, um, an egg. Okay, so that's not canned either. Sweet peas and canned carrots. This is what's left over after we had full plates the other night, <laughs> which I cannot believe. So just going to heat it up. It's going to be a quick and easy dinner tonight. The only thing that sucks on batches like this, I make my own teriyaki sauce and it turned out really kick-ass this time. Yum! <laughs> it was so good. Like, I could eat rice and just the sauce. It's that good. But because I don't have an exact recipe of anything written down, I don't know how to replicate it. Um, so one of these days, I'm really going to have to go through and do exact measurements. But I can tell you the ingredients. It's about one quarter to one third cup of extra virgin olive oil. Um, I usually just do, I, I mean, I'm like, like four of those of sesame seed oil and five heaping spoonfuls of sugar and then I like simmer that on the pan for a minute um, and then I add soy sauce and rice wine vinegar and a touch of water and I just kind of like keep mixing those until I taste test and the ratio turns right and then I thicken it up with a bit of flour and water boil it for a second and then add a bit of ground ginger and garlic to taste and then let it cool and mix it all in. So, um, we have a ton of food, dinner tonight, lunch tomorrow. Um, breakfast, lunch. Breakfast, lunch. Oh, I should put these in tortillas, that would be good. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, just like a regular easy passage meal for us and since we're kind of getting a little more than halfway now, we don't have quite the fresh produce, so getting into the canned food, really good option. So, one of our quick and easy go-to meals. Our fancy bowls, uh -huh. but they're a little non-skid thing, and we can't flip the table out because otherwise things go flying, so it's a little small table right now, but it's okay. So yeah, that's, that's dinner. Yay, yum, let's dig in. It's midnight now. Uh, my shift is done officially, so this is a, a, a day in the life of elements. Um, basically, there's nothing for the past four hours. I was reading uh, while Jess was sleeping. That was about it. Georgie was trying to get out to go um, watch the birds, so strapped her in with a little harness. She sat in the cockpit, watched the birds for about an hour and a half. It's actually pretty cold out there, so I'm surprised she stayed as long as she did. Uh, beyond that, really, nothing going on. So it was just uh, keep an eye out every 15 minutes and waiting for my time to come uh, where I can go back to sleep or go to sleep, actually. So yeah, that's, that's a day in the life of uh, elements. Basically, uh, just kind of keeping an eye out. That's pretty much all we do is look around, make sure that there's no other ships. Um, look at the weather, make sure that there's nothing crazy happening. Sails are set properly. That's about it.
So that's a, a day on our passage. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Am I supposed to say something else? Outs? <laughs> Join us for the next episode of MJ Sailing, where winds on our nose have us beating off course and adding more and more extra miles to our journey. We also tried our drifter sail for the first time, which we find out is over 40 years old.